This is what we lovingly call our world headquarters. We have completed phase one to 100%, which was installing temporary beams on the inside of this old 1950s gymnasium is what it used to be, and some concrete buttresses on the outside because this thing was absolutely on the verge of collapse. And now that it's stabilized, we start the rebuilding process. But before we can get to rebuilding, we have to finish phase two, which is what we're working on now, which is some drainage and sloping issues on the outside, getting all the underbrush, getting all the brush and everything cleared and out of the way. We did some riprap placement to help with some stabilization on the side of this hill. And we put some stone in here so we can get the parking area finished and cleared out and ready, which will allow us to then eventually move on to phase three. The next step on phase two of this massive project is to get this sycamore tree cut down and out of the way. If you're wondering why, well, we'll get into that as well. We're gonna get this knocked out. Step one, we gotta get her topped off with fuel and moved up there, but before we do that, let's make sure she's got the good stuff in her. Let's get some fuel. Does anybody remember what side the fuel tank's on? Fuel light is flashing, so hopefully we have enough to get to the pump. Wouldn't that be something? Thunder Creek trailer is not here, so we're just gonna fill up at the pump. There's a faster option. There we are. Just gotta watch out for bumps. They turn into catapults pretty quickly. We got a low tire as well we're gonna have to address, but let's make sure we can actually get to the air pump first. Whee! Oh, buddy. Depends on the machine. The 304, the fuel light comes on. You got about 37 seconds to shut her down. Uh, some machines fuel light comes on, you got the whole rest of the day. You just never really know. Stay. Uh, we need to run over and put some air in that rig for sure. Never need air in your tires. Market's got air and it's free, like it should be. Some places charge for this stuff. 95 PSI, we're gonna be here for 17 hours. We're back to where we need to be with that, which means in theory, we're ready for a short road trip. Can you imagine if one of the hoses blew on one of those hydraulic motors, you know, and then just down the hill we go. You know, I just, the things I think about. Sure, it'll be fine. All right, the first goal is gonna be not get stuck right off the bat. So. See how that goes. We shouldn't, but this is a heavy, heavy machine, so crazier things have happened. I know where I'd like to be. Oh. Let's we'll see if we can get it wiggled in that spot. Come over this way just a little bit. As long as we can clear that one there, we should be okay. But this is about the most level spot here. And we need to be far enough back this way or not dropping stuff onto the machine, but also far enough that we can get in there. Because if that's too long between there, you guys understand math, right? You know how measurements work, point A to B. Good on the tail back there. Those first few branches are gonna be a little tight, but I mean, we're at where we're at. I think we can make it work. Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. I did notice a slight oil leak on the lift, so I ran up to the house, 
Got all my saws and everything all loaded up and ready to go. It gave the engine a chance to cool off because it would appear, I got my handy dandy ladder here, that the leak is coming from the backside from the oil filter. Not much left to the imagination on this one. Whoever put this oil filter on got pretty happy with it. The oil is puking out that hole right there. Just puking out the filter. We're not gonna be able to run it like that, so I need to get this filter off. I need to get this filter off and see if I can't track one down. He might have one up at his shop. Filters, hand snug, you know. A hefty hand snug. Now maybe there's a reason they did that. And we just don't know the answer to that reason yet. But we got a new filter. It's a little taller than the other one, but that's not gonna hurt anything. She still fits. The important thing is that that doesn't work. All right, so the first filter that was sent out was off by one digit. They accidentally sent 51228 and it's 51288. That's okay, we got it now. Of course, it was one o'clock in the afternoon and we started at seven, so not quite where I wanna be, but if the biggest complaint I have today is I'm a couple hours behind what I thought my perceived schedule was gonna be, still a pretty good day, honestly. Let's throw some more oil in and see what we got. All right. Oh, I got a whole Ford Ranger full of goodies. We're gonna start with the pole saws. We'll take it off of this and put it on my OB power unit just because it's a little bit more convenient to run the electric, especially for the first step, which is gonna be all the little limbs. Uh, this is a HIPAA carburetor that's on this. This video is brought to you by HIPAA, by the way. I picked up, well, they sent some of their chains. And I was like, man, these chains, you know, for a little price point chain, not bad. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna keep them around. So if we ever get into some stumps or something where I know I'm gonna trash a chain, well, I'll just throw this chain on there. But truth be told, I've been using those things. I'll have to look back when I put the first one on. I still have that same chain on the 372. Now I have one on the 55. And I've got one on the pulse all as well, right? Yeah, I've got one on the pole saw as well still, so I'm still running those chains after all the work we've been doing. I got no complaints. They seem to work fine. Their prices are fantastic. They sell the carburetors. They sell the chains. They sell all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you need a tool to do your carburetor adjustment, you need a tachometer for your carburetor, they got it, man. If you need to learn how to put a battery on your weed eater, they don't have that. Okay, now we got it. They got it all and they got good prices. I'll put a link in the description, check it out, and at the very least, tell them thanks for supporting this. All right, we're gonna start with the pole saw. Get the smaller stuff out of the way. I'm gonna run a helmet so I don't cram my head up into a limb while I'm not paying attention. These things can turn into catapults pretty quickly, especially if you drop something on the boom. There's the roof of the headquarters, up close look. Gonna have a lot of re-screwing to do at some point. There's the river. Okay, a little bit of a tour. All right, pole saw kind of comes in handy so I can get through some of this stuff. Well, just because of where I got to park the lift, that's kind of close to the boom, but. With the pole saw and taking little limbs, should be okay. Yep, not bad. And on those, I'm just cutting from the top. In my mind, what makes sense is that it leaves a little bit on the bottom for it to hang on and hinge down and swing away from the lift and then fall. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what I'm doing. We're just making this up. We made it up last time and it worked fine. Slowly getting ourselves kind of worked into this pocket here. We're gonna go down and start with these lower branches now we got the space. 
and just pretty much work our way up that side of the trunk and then we can work our way that side up and then we'll just have to do the same thing as we get closer to the top. So we're not over their building, but uh, same thing, we're just going to cut from the top and hope that bottom leaves a little hinge and let it swing back away from their building over there, back on our property hopefully. If you're wondering why we didn't just cut it down to begin with, uh, the proximity of buildings is the main reason, this being one of them for sure. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Jeez. How's he do it? Luck mainly. Yeah. A lot of luck. Just notice that's poison ivy. Oh, neat. I wasn't even paying attention to it. Have I been in it? I don't think so. Wasn't paying attention to that. I don't think I grabbed any yet. But, uh, gonna wanna avoid that for sure. Yeah. working our way to the top slow but sure we got another one kind of close to that side over there Let's see if we can get this to drop then I want to go down and I'll check the engine oil and the filter make sure everything's looking good on that since we just swapped it out beautiful I mean, just, people could pay me for this. Well, that's what we're looking like. Not going too bad so far. And she's still got the same amount in that we put in. So we're gonna head back up until I'm out of battery on that saw. Then we'll switch to the gas saw because we're starting to get closer to some of the bigger stuff once we get these last little top pieces done. Camera's down there. Hope we don't hit that. Oh, that one hurt. That's what we're trying to avoid. So as far as limbs on the tree, we're on our last one, two, three, kind of this side of the tree. Everything on that side's cut and ready, and then we'll be switching to the gas saw and going to the bigger chunks. Well, that's how we're sitting now. Well, I'm out of battery, but that's fine. We're just gonna go ahead. I was gonna go to the 55 and then come down, but I didn't take the time to touch anything up before I did this. We just jumped into it. And the chain on the 372 is in a considerable better shape. So we're just gonna take the 372 up and run that. It's about three o'clock right now, if you're wondering. And if you weren't wondering, it's still about three o'clock. There you go. You're not overfilling the gas or even putting any in it. You know, same with the bar oil. 
The nice thing with this is every cut we make, we get a little bit closer to the ground in a controlled way. You know what I mean? We could get close to the ground in a hurry. That's what we're trying to avoid though. I did warm the saw up down below and my idle's a touch high and I played with it a little bit, but I can't get it exactly how I want. We should be okay for what we're doing. Trick here is not hitting the basket. Closer to the ground, also to the patch of poison ivy. So, putting a lot of faith in these, you know, but. down as I need to be with the lift and I'm fairly confident when we bring the 304 down here next day I'll work on this get this all organized we can put it on the back side and push it this way let's go ahead and walk this back to Mike's Riding the downhill. I bet we're topping. I bet we're doing six mile an hour right now. People can't even see us passing it so fast. Are the trees getting blurry for you too? I don't know if that's the speed or not though. Oh, you got too steep of an incline. It shut her down. We 
are back down at the lot. I still got to put fuel in it, clean the basket out tomorrow afternoon. I am determined to be hauling the brush off with that truck and I'm waiting on a part that's supposed to come in on Friday. Very inexpensive part, it was like $12, but crucial to the thing running and not blowing up. So hopefully in an upcoming video, we'll be hauling all that stuff off with that rig. So I'll snag the 304 real quick. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. As long as you promise not to say we've already seen that whenever we come around to it. I have done some more work to the pool. We got the wall and the footer down around this side, looking good. I gotta get this pumped out so we can finish with the wall and then the backfill. So we've been doing some work to it. That is an odd color, but surprisingly, look at how clear that is. Looks like a swimming pool now. Oh, whole bunch of frogs. Whole bunch of frogs, just loving it. Check the oil on this thing. We're just walking this down. I don't have any trailers available today to move it. It's honestly not that far. Seems like it's far. It's really not that far. Yeah, I bet it only takes me 20 minutes or so to get her walk down there. So we're gonna kinda stack these, organize these, do the old compactor, uh, there we go, like so. Uh, and get these set to load onto a truck. As far as these bigger sections here, I don't use enough firewood to be taking the sycamore, but that doesn't mean somebody might not want it. So I'll set some of this bigger stuff to the side, I'll send a few messages out. If people want it, they can come take it and use it this winter. If they don't want it, it'll end up on the burn pile. Pretty simple process there. I'm 92% positive that we can just cut that and it's gonna come where we want it to without any assistance from the 304. I've done sketchier things with lower positivity ratings. I'm gonna hit this just real quick like. So since I'm pretty good at hitting the camera, I set you up where I want the tree to go. That's the goal. I think we should be okay. Probably a little bitty wedge in the back just to keep it from sit back on us. It is a little bit bigger than my bar is long, but we'll overcome that, I'm sure of it. The only catch, at some point I had glasses on my head. Gone, don't know, I've walked around. Nowhere to be found. So safety squints engaged, I suppose. Always wear safety glasses, that's my advice to you. You guys can just hang back here on the 304. Hopefully this isn't the camera I hit, you know what I mean? <laughs> That'll work.
zwei. So let's talk a little bit about the why while I'm working on this stump here. One, we don't plan on digging this stump out before we even get to that point. We'll just knock that off the list real quick. At some point in the distant, distant future, we'll get a stump grinder here. We'll grind this out the rest of the way. These roots are kind of helping hold the sill together. And we did put the riprap on the hill, but that's more for surface erosion. We didn't put any fabric under that riprap because we want trees to come up through that riprap. So the riprap covers the surface part of that erosion and then the eventual trees that will grow through it will kind of help with their roots hold that hill into place. So that's the long-term plan. But until those come along and get established, we're just gonna leave these in the ground. They'll rot over time. We're not too concerned about it. So we're just gonna get the top of this cut off mainly so I don't slam into it with a piece of equipment one day when I'm not paying attention. But as far as the why goes, initially when we talked about fixing the bottom wall of this building, we talked about lifting the building up a couple feet to get us 10 foot ceilings on the inside so I could work on taller stuff. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that's an insane amount of work for a very small amount of gain. It would be much easier and cost effective in the future to build an equipment shed off to the side of this thing, basically making the building an L with some taller bays, some 16 foot ceiling, 14 foot door bays, where I could pull the backhoe in or the mini excavator in or the dump truck in and either store it there or work on it. So the goal at some point is there will be a building over here. And although that building won't be for a long time, distant, distant future, because we got a lot to do on the actual original building first. It just makes sense that while we're down here doing all this work and we have the equipment available to go ahead and just get this knocked out and done and out of the way. Because we're going to be digging around this and digging some dirt up as we finish off the parking area, which means we're going to be damaging the roots and eventually killing the tree anyway. So this way it's just done, it's out of the way, and we don't have to worry about it. Now hopefully that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, well that's fine too, because it doesn't have to. You know what I mean? It, it makes sense to me. And that's, that's who's... That's who's doing it. So that's what we look like now. That is fantastic. Another huge step. The last step before phase two is complete, which phase two is the parking area. The last step for phase two will be done by the end of October is get the rest of that topsoil out of there, truck in some stone and finish stoning in this parking area. And then that's phase two, 100% done. Then we can move on to phase three, which we've already kind of prematurely started with that beam install on the inside, uh, replacing that wall. So pretty dang excited about it. We're making some good progress. Next video, I think it's gonna be the 755, but I really couldn't tell you. It just depends what parts arrive today and tomorrow and Friday. Maybe I do have too many projects. No, no, that can't be.